Google okay, photosphere. All right. Hi, Michelle. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. We're just getting started. I'm going to do some things, and you feel free to pipe in whenever you want to. All right. Um, here's the group. Let's see if I can get it on here. Oh, boy, big crowd. Yeah, we've got a lot of cool people here. I'm not doing a very good job panning. I'm not following your rule of pan slowly, am I? Going slowly, right? <laughs> You want to uh, so you've connected your fan. You're, are you going live with us? Uh, nope, not no. right now. Okay. Nope. We'll do it towards the end. I was going to actually make a little video to put on our Facebook page and, and, and such, just to go through the mechanics of it. Oh, cool. Cool. But, uh, well, you can introduce yourself, and then I'll start on where I was going to go. And, like I said, pipe in whenever you hear me say something wrong. <laughs> okay, well, hello. I'm Michelle Walford. I'm a communication specialist at the University of Delaware, and I'm located in the southern campus, so I'm in Georgetown, Delaware, and that's about uh, 20 miles from the, sh the beach. So I'm, we're close to the, 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 we're a little state, but we're down sort of south and central, close to Maryland. Perfect. Where I am, anyway. Yes, and Michelle is probably Extension's foremost expert in live streaming. That's too generous, but thank you. Oh, no, it's not too generous at all. All right, well, I'm going to pull up that uh, presentation. And the emphasis of this one is on using your smartphone for capturing video in the field for and for live streaming. Oh, no, I'm giving you a preview. All right, so I'll move the Zoom window down here a little bit. Okay, so how many of you were at the mortality workshop yesterday? Okay, so you guys saw me wandering around with my, my pile of goodies, videotaping everything. All righty. All right. So, just like you guys had all the good ideas last workshop, when would you want to maybe use a live stream or when would you want to actually capture video out in the wild without the benefit of a professional film crew? What, what are some things you guys do that this would be useful for you? Yeah, you don't have a professional team, yeah? Any luck? things that always kind of came to mind for me would be, I've watched a lot of extension people give presentations enough to know that the most excited they get is when they have something from a real farmer that's cool. You know, that's when they light up, that's when they have the greatest stuff in their presentations. And so actually having decent video from that farm where maybe the farmer himself or herself is telling about it. To me, that would be kind of a fun thing as well. So Michelle, why do you live stream? Well, we live stream, obviously, you're going to run into a, a quality difference. And I had somebody say, well, why don't we just use video? And the reason we live stream is for the, um, the interaction with the audience. So obviously, you can, you can communicate a message and record a video and script it, and it will be very slick and polished. Um, but when you go live, a lot of things can go wrong, and that's okay. You stumble over words. I do it all the time. But it's you get questions from the viewers, and sometimes they're trolls, but most of the time they're good. They're good people. So it's the spontaneity of, hey, I'm from Argentina, and I'm watching you right now, and we use that. We use that technique, or we do something else, and or it could be. It, it's that. It, it's the spontaneity of somebody, depending on the platform, somebody coming across you that would not have normally come across some extension. And for me, that's what it's all about is they're going to go to your site to, to watch a YouTube video or something you upload on Facebook. But the live 
live streaming populates everything and so you get complete you get a new group of people they're not necessarily your fans that will come in and so i like it for that reason as well thank you so yeah if you work in here now we, we we talked about some of these too is if there's a disease outbreak you might want to live stream from something rather than bring people together you have kind of something cool at a farm. This farmer found a solution to a problem that vexes a lot of your farmers. Wouldn't it be great to be able to capture that or to have that field day or demo and use it for future use? So here's the part where you guys get to stand up and come up here. We're going to play with the stuff that I have up here. And Michelle, do feel free to pipe in on what... Uh, I don't know how I can get you here, but you can see we've got some stuff here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have some tools, too, I can show you. Okay, I will, uh, I will bring your video up then. All right, so cool. Come on up here. We'll try to look at all the cool things. Let's see. I don't know if I can get... We'll see if that works. Well, one of the one of my favorite things is this little thing, just a miniature tripod, and it does extend out, so you can you can use it full height. But if you're out in the field getting video, um, I'm not steady. I think I'm holding it steady, but I'm not. So I definitely, and this is about a $20 tripod. Do you what do you use or recommend for a tripod? I have a cheapo tripod. Um, if you're carrying stuff around out in the field, you don't want to bring anything heavy, but as long as it's a tr real tripod, I bring that. Um, I also use a monopod, which is this device here. Mm -hmm. And I like a monopod better than a selfie stick because you can <laughs> use this with a DSLR as well. It has this, the standard. Um, so it's about $30, very lightweight. It has a little poke in the bottom so you can anchor it, mm -hmm. but it has a nice grip right here. And then you just buy a little spring load to, to screw on the top for your phone. But if you want it, if you don't want to use your phone, you want to actually use a DSLR, of course you can't do live with that. So it, it does it's a separate purpose. So I like the monopod a lot, but I don't use an expensive tripod unless you're in a with gale winds or something, that would be where you'd want some weight. Um, yeah, my, my three thousand. I don't know if you get DSLR. that out where you are, but we don't normally speaking. I have like a thirty-five dollar Sony tripod I use, but I have about five different tripods. <laughs> yeah, I have a nice one for my expensive DSLR. I will not trust that on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have the little tiny. I have a little tiny mini one. Let me see here. I didn't know I was going to show all this stuff. <laughs> She's but. got all the toys. But the spring load she was talking about here, you guys can. You can actually stretch it out and put it on the phone and attach that to the tripod. You can see I've got one. Oh, there it is. I've got, uh, this is. It's right on the edge of what that spring was. This is one tripod I use. I've got three or four. This is a little similar to what she was showing, a little tabletop. And then there's the kind that had the bendable arms and you can grab them and hold them on a, a pole or something like that. But that's good if you're live streaming yourself. You can put it on a desk in front and talk about your topic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, between the tripod, that tripod's $20. That little mount on the my smartphone was $8. Yeah, it's inexpensive. Yeah, they're not expensive at all. So it's definitely worth having. And then if you look on that mount I have on my smartphone, there's a little Velcro sticker on it. I use that when I have to attach like a battery pack or something so it's not hanging from the cable. Do you use Velcro, Michelle, or do you use rubber bands or anything like that? I do the wrap around the cord technique. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably should do Velcro, but the, my battery pack, I use the Jackery. It's the, almost a little longer than a lipstick case. And there's different ratings for those. So you want to look at um, the, the, the charge. The one I have is about $12.99 on Amazon. And it will give you 10 hours of video. It will, it will charge your phone up 10 hours. 
um, or 10 hours of service. So I usually plug, when I'm doing live streaming, I always plug it into that battery and then I kind of just wrap the battery around my tripod, but a Velcro would, I mean, I didn't even think of Velcro, but that would work. Yeah, so, yeah, we definitely want some kind of external battery pack. Yeah, you can't have enough of them. So you can see I have the other piece of the Velcro on the battery pack, so then I can attach it to the mount because these things I don't want, I don't want to wreck my phone charging cable. And so I've got, I have at least two of these with me most of the time on, yeah. on chargers. And that was our gift at our extension conference. A pocket charger? It was a power charger. So well, was, use it then. Yeah. Yep. And I've been finding ponytail holders I like better than yeah, rubber bands. Oh, yeah, they work good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use them anymore. My hair's too short, but they're great. Yeah, I had all sons, so I, I, I didn't end up with very many. And then the, the other, between the tripod and the mount, then the third piece of equipment and the battery, I guess the fourth piece of equipment that I consider is essential is a microphone of some kind. And so this one, Mary Berg lent me. This would be, um, I think, a really nice entry level, just a lavalier microphone. This one has about a six, five or six foot cable that you would just plug it right into the microphone jack on your smartphone. And Mary has an extension cable with it. And the other one, the one that I have, and I'm going to get one of those like what she has. And I those are about too. $20. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got it too. Yep, yep. These the, are great. Yes, the shotgun microphone. Um, I bought one that was made by Rode, R O D. That's what I've got, the Rode. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the Dead Cat filter for the wind. <laughs> they call it they call it a furry filter or something like that. It's a dead cat filter to me. I don't know what you call yeah, it. Yeah, that's what the industry that's what your reporters call it. It's kind <laughs> of a, um, white dead cat. It looks more like a dead squirrel, but yep. um, if you have an iPhone seven, however, you're out of luck with this. Um, so yeah. I've held on to my iPhone six because I haven't gotten a lavalier for the for the iPhone yet, but it's done. It's nice. You can get wire ones, and they you have to have a power source too. Mm -hmm. One other thing to watch out for, and you'll see this in the video I show you in a bit, is um, I'll plug this into my phone, and do you see where my camera lens is? Yeah, it's partially under the fuzz there. So. What I ended up doing was Radio Shack was going out of business. <laughs> it's like a siren song to us techie geeks. So I found this just little four inch, four inch cord. And so now I, when I put it on the tripod, I just wedge the microphone in between the tripod and the camera. It's really, uh, you know, Quite a technique, but it worked, <laughs> and it's out of the way. Then, so basically, it ends up bouncing like this. Now, what kind of phone do you have? A Galaxy. Well, because mine is mine's different. My cat, my camera is. So when I'm recording, I'm doing this. My camera's here. Yep. Yeah, and I'm replacing and it my, soon, but it's a uh, Note Edge, Galaxy Note Edge. Okay, okay. So that's why I wasn't real concerned when it covered this up. Because right, because it, 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 works, works, it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. And it really, when, when you're filming outside for farmers, master gardeners, that wind sound is... You need a gotta microphone. Have, you got to have some kind of uh, external microphone. Yes. And it, yes. The wind. You get that... <laughs> kind of noise and it's voices, really it it ruins the video. To me it ruins the video. So she said that won't work with an iPhone 7. Is it because it no longer has the microphone jack? Correct. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a adapter to go into the Well could you use Bluetooth? You can't plug it. Well that doesn't work like it's not an I think there are Bluetooth micro Yeah, I think they you have I haven't investigated it because I haven't made the switch yet. I'm probably gonna wait now until the I eight comes out. And then I'll then I'm going to be forced to to yep. look at. But I think there are some adapters. When I was looking at, because I figured there'd be people with different kinds of phones here, and there was there were some where you had to have some kind of an adapter with some iPhones. Mm -hmm. And you can those were like ten or fifteen dollars on Amazon. 
so they weren't real bad as far as like a wireless or bluetooth i haven't i haven't used them one thing that i really dislike about my phone and this particular shotgun microphone is that if i use this while my wi-fi is on i get that i get a clicking noise so i have to shut off my wi-fi to use this so if i'm live streaming it obviously defeats some of the purpose <laughs> but uh does that do you have a uh, iphone michelle you said yeah, I have the iPhone, and, it, and of course, signal is your, your your big enemy, so you just have to deal with it. Most you, people know, I think, it, it, if you're going to, if you're really concerned about not having interruptions, then you then you prepare a video ahead of time, but... Yeah, yeah and that... The, the other thing I use, I don't know what, I just wanted to show you this and tell you not yeah, to this make is this cool. mistake. This is a gimbal, <laughs> as a stabilizing gimbal. If if you're if you're walking around like sometimes I'll do live live broadcasts I'm touring a say a master gardener event I'm walking around and showing the garden um, you definitely want to have your phone not in your hands but on some type of a stick so I bought a stabilizer this is about two ninety nine and it works great but if you're gonna if you're really into this and want to geek out I would make sure you get a three axle gimbal not a two axle this is a two axle and what it does when you're walking around it has a motor and it keeps your phone balanced so if you're you can even run with these things and it really takes the jiggle out of your um of your so it's it's not all jittery well, i bought a two axle and it works but it's it's a little weird i mean you are going to get a lot of attention doing it and um, so if you're going to invest in one of these, get the three axles. Yep. Yeah. So the that shotgun microphone with the filter on it, that was about sixty dollars for the one I bought. That lavalier microphone of Mary's, I think she said was twenty, and um, and you can pay as much as you want for a microphone. <laughs> Thing. Yep, it comes with this one came with this. Here's the box if you want to. I took a picture of it. So yeah. But I didn't know. And one nice thing about the windshield included. Yep. And one nice thing about this shotgun microphone is that it has a place here to plug in headphones so you can be listening to playback rather than yank, yanking the microphone out to listen to if it got the sound okay, put it back in, re record some more, yank it out, listen. So you something like this shotgun has a is the headphones and the or the earbuds attachment that you can listen through on. <coughs> Another way to get sound, and I, it's done. It must be done by people who like editing video more than me. But I, a lot of people will say to take this recorder out, get it near your subject, and then just take your video and match it up with the audio later. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not that brave, but it is an option if you are into video editing and you will get great sound with these recorders. Okay. Yeah. That was about $80. I have a sister who's in the radio business, so she picked it out for me. Um, I don't use it a lot for, for video. I do use it for recording. And so mostly I was trying to show a lot of just really portable reasonably priced things because if you're going to spend a lot of money you're going to probably get the film crew out to do this stuff so yeah what i consider essential are a tripod or monopod like michelle had a smartphone mount you can get them for tablets too it's not just the smartphones and like they're really inexpensive battery packs and a microphone. Yeah. So you've got the digital voice recorder. Would you recommend to get good audio doing their voice separate from the video? Or with an iPhone, do you think it does both? I good think it's enough? good enough. I just brought that up because I've had enough people tell me that that's what they do. Like I said, they like editing video more than I do. Um, but see, that's po that would be post-production, right? Yep, Joe? that would be post. Yeah, yeah this so is the live sort of streamed. I, I'm mixing things up on you. Um, <laughs> yeah. What about extra storage? <laughs> and this is this is a tablet grip, by the way. So. Oh, I need to bring it you works up. This, it's just a big giant thing, so mm -hmm. don't work on a tablet. Yeah, and as far as extra storage, that's on my next slide on the what I consider nice to have, but I maybe shouldn't think of it as just nice to have. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know, most of you I assume have, have broken open your phones and looked at the, you get this tiny little, this tiny little micro SD card that you can put in there. So it's really easy to lose. <laughs> but if you're gonna, and I don't usually video on the very highest quality or I would fill this up pretty fast. But you can see that I, I have a, hey, you need some storage. You know, I've got my got my storage here, and so I tend to keep a lot of these in something like this, so I don't lose them. But um, but yeah, if you're looking at filming something that's an all-day event, I'm gonna guess you're gonna need to look at some more of these to put in there. Are there, Michelle? Do you know of any external storage? The, the only thing that I did find out I'm gonna be live stream. Well, if you're live streaming and you and you want to save the footage for later to edit. Mm -hmm. You got to clear your phone off, yes. And <laughs> what I do is I don't keep any, especially videos are such high file sizes. Um, I up, I back up all of my f video and photos on well, Google, Google Photos will do it uh, automatically. So I have a backup there, and then I use Flickr. Uh, that gives you one terabyte of storage for free. And our college uses it, and we use it, and I back up everything to that. Now that that won't give you that won't back up large videos, but if you can move your photos and your person, if you have personal stuff, if you want to move it off and keep it, and it's not it won't get hacked or anything, but it's pretty secure. That's just going to free up all the. Uh, but you, I think four gigabytes of, I mean, four hours of video might take up sixteen gigs maybe. Mm -hmm. So a 16 gig SD card, little mini SD card would be great. But on the iPhone, is there? Yeah, you can't take apart an iPhone, can you? No. Put more storage in. Yeah, so that's where Android might be a better option in that regard, is you can get the, I said you can rip it open and add more storage, which I love, because I, that, I, that's a 64 gig card that I had in mine. Um, and they said, I, I uh, videotaped for, gosh, a couple hours yesterday, and I'm, I've still got plenty of space on I'll that card. I'll be right back. Somebody's calling me. Yep, right no back. worries. And so then in the nice-to-have category, the extra storage, and another trick I found or people were telling me about when I was asking questions on what, you know, what, what besides my own little experience and world should I be bringing, is you can get those wide-angle lenses for your phone. And what that allows you to do, especially if you're talking, you're videotaping yourself talking or live streaming, or you have somebody else, is you can get a lot closer to them. So they're going to feel like it's right on top of them, but it's going to look normal because it's a wide-angle lens. And the closer you get, the better that sound is going to be. So that's a way to maybe get away without that external microphone, is if you have one of those wide-angle lenses, you could get in close enough. But you're still going to have some of that wind noise and, and all that stuff. So. So cool lenses, um, and then like Michelle showed, the gimbalized mount. I'm not a very steady, sturdy person. I, I shake, so that would be something I might invest in in the future if I do much of this. Okay, so I have a video to show you. Um, I actually took my phone out to the backyard, and at the time I didn't have my little cable, so I was. So you're gonna see some of the the dead cat on the screen, but uh, it's to show you the difference between this with the filter on, without, and then pulling this off and just using the phone's own microphone. So it's about six minutes or so. Hi, I'm here in my backyard at our farm. Let me see if I can get this. Assume this is any outdoor setting, including you know a field day or a research plot where you might be wanting to capture live video. So if you can't hear that, come up here, get closer. I think this is as loud as I can get it from the looks of the settings. And note the background noise you're hearing. You'll, I'll explain it in a minute, but listen a lot to the background noise. As you can see on the screen, I'm using a shotgun microphone with a dead cat filter on it. The way that this phone is set up and where the microphone plugs in, uh, it gets in the way of the camera. I'm going to be switching out the smartphone here in a couple of months. And obviously, I'll be looking at that uh, arrangement when I pick a new phone. 
but since I was mostly concerned about you hearing about the, getting a sense of the sound difference, I left it on for this demo video. Obviously, I would have to adjust differently if this was a real uh, video shoot, something that I wanted to use, or else I would have to look at zooming in a bit. But I'm about six feet away. I have a radio going that direction. There isn't much wind right now, but even with this filter, you'll get some of that noise when a gust blows through from time to time, but it is much better with that filter on. I'll back up a few steps. And you'll notice that I get considerably quieter, even uh, just a few steps back. And so that's something important to remember is to be as close to your subject as you can. If I was talking with somebody and needed to capture two of us, a shotgun microphone like this will allow you to hear both of us versus maybe a lavalier. You'd only have one person hooked on unless you had one of the more complex or you know, fancier system. But I'll take this filter off for just a second. Okay, this is without the, the dead cat filter. And again, there's not much wind right now. It's been blowing through from time to time. You get but just to give you a sense of how the sound is a little different. And you can still hear that radio a little bit, not much. And now I'm going to take this off completely. Okay, this is the onboard sound. Compare the background noise. I said on a day like this, you'll definitely get something usable. But I think the real advantage of this one is definitely that background noise. Take a few steps back. And just like the other uh, shotgun microphone, you get quieter when you go further away. So if you're in a crowd, so hopefully this gives you an idea of of the difference between using the camera microphone and an external microphone. Okay, so hopefully that gave some some background there on the why you why a microphone helps and why it's a pretty good investment, especially for twenty or sixty dollars. You're going to get a lot more usable video editing. Now this is not something you do on live streams, and I don't do it on the phone at all. I take well, a break. Actually, can I butt in? Sure, sure, go for it. <laughs> you can now do some editing live, and um, I bought this thing, it's called Amiibo, and then you want to go on Facebook to find out about it. Has anybody there seen any of the, the commercials? How do you spell that? M-E-V-O. Now what you're looking at here is about $3.99. What this does, this allows for director's cuts while you're living, uh, while you're doing live streaming. And we bought a battery pack with it. So you get, and it comes with, and if, if you want, I can show you how this works. Do you have a second for me to show you a little, a short video? Sure. All right. I'm going to share my screen. I think I might have, you might have to uh, give me permission to share my screen. Let me see. Oh, I can share it. Now I can share it. All right, so hold on. So this was uh, taken by with our FCS agent. We just bought this, and so this is Nancy's video, and she was calibrating a thermometer. So if you guys, this would be terrific for food demonstrations and FSS, 4-H. I can see it really happening here. So we, the only thing I did with this was add the, the University of Delaware bumpers at the front and back. But watch the cuts on Nancy as she's demonstrating. Hi, my name is Nancy Mears, and I'm an extension agent with the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. Today, I'm going to teach you how to but calibrate a thermometer using the ice point method. The first step is to get a glass full of ice water. The next step is to take your thermometer, insert it into the calibration tool that comes with your thermometer. Next, you're going to insert the thermometer in the ice water up to the dimple. You want to make sure that you leave the thermometer in the ice water for the recommended time 
that comes with your thermometer from the manufacturer. In this case, the manufacturer recommends five minutes, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're just gonna leave it in for a few seconds. We're waiting until the thermometer reaches 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You get and the once idea it does, there. we're gonna use- I think you get the idea there. Um, what it does is you download the, the, the app and you're able to pre-program shots. So I can do a close-up, I can do a close-up of her hands, a wide shot. And so it's allowing me to record her. And that is, that's native microphone to me, though. You can set up auxiliary microphones with that. But in this case, it comes with a 16 gig um, SD, little mini SD card. But if you're doing it live on, and it's, it's um, compatible with uh, live, live stream, Facebook, and Periscope, and Twitter. So you can set one of these up and live stream and actually kind of act as your own director and cut in and cut out without having to worry about the audio. It's pretty cool. It's it expensive, is. but it's, a, it's <laughs> worth an investment. If you've got money, you have to buy out on a grant or <laughs> one, one per, per extension office or something like that where everybody could kick in to get the battery pack and it'll fit on a regular tripod. Um, the battery pack and the camera itself, because this gives you like four extra hours, it's about $7.99. So it's an investment, but it really, I think, makes the cuts look a lot sharper, and it was, it was a pretty neat thing to, to experiment with. And unfortunately, you're not saying $7.99, are no, you? No, I'm not. I'm saying <laughs> <dot> zero zero. <laughs> Oh, that's cool stuff. But yeah, when I do uh, like field video, I haven't, I, I use Camtasia, I go back to use it on the computer. I haven't done any field editing. But um, the two that, if you actually want to do some editing right in the field, you've captured this. Apple is iMovie and Android was Adobe Premiere Clip were the two that came the most highly recommended by the people that I talked to. Um, they both were, were pretty good apps in, in regards. And then there's a lot of apps you can get that'll like automatically generate a video out of all this stuff you capture. And I'm, I have trust issues. I'm not likely to try those in the near future, but um, having them generate from a bunch of pictures or just from some footage, it guesses what you think the video should be. But those two are some good, and they're both free. Um, I think iMovie comes preloaded on everything, doesn't it, Michelle? It does now, yeah. yeah. I've been used to. But for Android, I, I had to download Adobe, but it was free. One thing that I do, I'm just going through some a few tips here, is that when I record somebody, I ask at the start of the recording, I ask two things. One, I ask them to say and spell their name so that I have it later. Because even if I remember who it was, I have to go back and look up their name or whatever. I also ask right on camera, is it okay if we use this video for some of our workshops or put it on our YouTube channel? You could carry waivers with you, but to be really correct, somewhere you need to have permission from these people when you're <laughs> videoing. So I tend to do it on camera. I don't know, do you do anything like that, Michelle? Yeah, I, we have, I went and bought myself a waitress, um, a waitress apron. And I bought wait. I went to a restaurant supply store and bought these little tiny clipboards so they fit inside like like a waitress would carry. And we keep um, for what you're saying. I normally will put on my voice recording memo and get them or get them on camera to say yes, it's fine. Um, but be very specific. Oh, because people come back and say I didn't know you were putting out on Facebook. I don't want one on social media. But with minor children, we usually put it get it in writing. So I usually keep these, or I have an over-the-shoulder bag that I wear, and I make them sign it. The <laughs> uni our university really wants us to put it on paper, but mm -hmm. I think it, in, in a pinch if you get it on tape. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's kind of one thing that's important to do. Um, another, well, obviously you wouldn't just surprise somebody, especially if it was live streaming. You'd want to be planning ahead as much as possible. You know, do they know you're bringing cameras? Do they know if you're going to be live streaming? So that, that piece of communication is pretty important. Um, 
be aware of your surroundings and your background. Um, I was working on one or with with uh, an extension educator who got a bunch of video in a dairy farm and it was great. They found a nice quiet spot where they could talk about one of the cool technologies on the farm. Well, later when they went to edit the video, um, the quiet spot was in front of the sick pen and there was a cow limping in the background. <laughs> so it was all completely unusable. As they just couldn't use it um, with that in the background. And I imagine you have some, with live streaming, you probably have even more fun stories to tell about being aware of your surroundings and your background, Michelle. Yeah, no, no, nothing like that. Of course, we all remember Sarah Palin being interviewed with the turkey head being grounded in the background and she was <laughs> running for president. But I get my business card and I write live on Facebook and I tape it to my monopod. So if you're walking around in a crowded place, mm -hmm people see that you're live on Facebook or live, because I try not to get anybody if they haven't signed. I don't like to ambush anyone. Um, I don't, I wouldn't appreciate being put on somebody's live stream and not knowing what they were doing. Because you see people today doing it, you don't know whether they're recording or recording themselves or recording what, which camera they're using. So I do try to say we're live on Facebook and a little, you could even probably make a permanent one up that you could stick on. So that's another reason for your Velcro. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. That's a good idea to have the yeah. have that live. Because I do that when I'm on a, a video call. I, I'll put a sign on my office telling people, yeah, you're going to be on a camera if you walk in here. <laughs> right. So the next thing, um, well, I guess questions at this point. I was going to actually go live on Facebook and Twitter here where we can go through the actual motions of it. But questions for Michelle or me before we do that? Yeah. Um, I, in the last year, I've seen people on Facebook, uh, they take a number of pictures, and it seems like it's the same as the video on Facebook instead of uh, I didn't hear it. Is that, is that something that's already on the Facebook? You can easily mm -hmm. do it, or is that an app? Okay, Glenn was asking about um, people taking pictures on Facebook, and you said it seems like they instantly end up with like a little video out of those pictures, and whether that's something that Facebook does. Slideshow, yeah, slideshow. Oh yeah, um, I know Google Google Photos does that. They they will put together, they will make suggestions all the time. All of a sudden, I'll get this video, and they'll be, oh, you were in Nebraska, and so it'll it'll put them all together and I'll put some music to it and all of a sudden a picture of my Siamese cat will get thrown in there <laughs> and she wasn't in Nebraska. So you can go in and edit those, but th those are like suggestions. But Google Photos actually has a really nice program and there's lots of apps that do that. Okay. But I don't know that Facebook does that innately. I, I think somebody is using a, a, a software program or an app for that. Okay. Uh, Becky. Okay, she was asking about editing um, on the phone or when on a computer. I use Camtasia on the computer. Um, I don't really, it's about $100, I think. Um, but I also have a PC. I think iMovie is on Macs too, isn't it? Yeah, iMovie's on Mac. Um, another one, Final Cut Pro is iMovie on steroids, so that's the pro version. Mm -hmm. If you want ghosting, if you ever look at. Um, video of the newscasters, if you shoot vertical video and people submit it to the news, there'll be a, a blurred version in the background to fill that black space, that's called ghosting. And you can't do that with iMovie, you have to have Final Cut Pro. But um, PCs, there's iMovie Maker, which that's is free. okay. It's it not comes bad. right on the computer is Windows Movie Maker. Mm -hmm. And I've used it, It's it works. I like yeah. Camtasia for adding some fancy things in, but I, it gets even fancier than that. I'm just, you know, a third-rate videographer, if even that. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, cool. Okay, what I was going to do next was, if you want to stick around and actually we can make a video of the group saying what you're what you're enjoying about Waste to Worth, and I'll put one on Facebook and one on Twitter just so you go through the motions of it. Um, if you don't want to stay for that part, you're welcome to, to head out to the next session, but we'll, 
we'll, uh, we'll do that next. Let's see. All right. I have the Facebook app I'm pulling up, and I'm going to my Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center page. And so then, ah, so I, so when I bring up, it says to write something, there I have the option to go live down there. So let's see, live streaming demo at waste to worth. All right. And so then I'm hitting go live. Okay. Hey, hey Jill, I can share something with you, by the way. There's something called Reflector. Mm -hmm. that if you have it installed, but it's on your computer, your computer will show exactly what's happening in the On Zoom, I can do that with the iPad, but cool. I would like that. That would be nice. I'm trying to get you guys, but <laughs> yeah, we're here live at Waste to Worth. We're doing a just a demonstration on live streaming. So, what's been the best part of Waste to Worth so far? How about this side of the room? Camaraderie. Camaraderie, yes. Best parts for you guys? Never people. Seeing people? Tours. Tours? Learning our stuff here today. <laughs> Learning. <laughs> Pig pick. <laughs> Pig picking, yep. The tours? Awesome. So, you guys can all go live on Facebook now, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you, what you'll get is a countdown. You'll go live and it'll go like three, two, one. And then it'll ask you later if you want to post it. I probably, I don't know if I'll post that or not, but you can uh, actually save it, have it on Facebook. Uh, at least on my phone, I can switch between cameras yep. while you're live. So I usually start out like yep. introducing it on myself, and then switch to the other camera um, to show whatever I'm, whatever I'm videoing. Mm -hmm. And then Twitter is really similar. So if I open my Twitter app, but it's not sharing it on the minute or right. as you're doing it. It is sharing as you do it. So what was the just, it, it tells you how long, it says three, two, one before you're live, so it gives you a moment to, because you can see yourself in the screen if you're looking at yourself, you're like, oh, my hair or something, so you know. So when you were recorded, it was literally just live? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even with me, like, three. No. And, and I don't have to keep it. See, that's the thing, is I don't have to keep it. I can. Are you on the Learning Center, basically, or are you on the Voice of Work? Learning Center. I haven't posted it yet, so you won't find it there yet. The Twitter one, I won't have and a choice. Twitter's great to get to get new audiences. So if you're trying to do an out, outreach. So was that live but not posted? Or was that live meaning we oh. think that's posted? Like you were well, okay, let's do it again. I'll, let's do it. I'll go through it again. Make sure I did it right. We'll make sure I did it right. So it should be like up on the LPLC right now? Mm -hmm. It should have been, but if I don't put the playback up there. So there's your countdown. Okay. Try to, in case I didn't do it right the first time. We're at a live streaming demonstration here at Waste to Worth. Um, Facebook.com slash L-P-E-L-C dot C-O-P. And if you go on and like it, then a little like floats across yep, the, the little, screen. the little heart flows yeah. across. Yeah, you can put And then how do you get the interaction? People can write comments and it'll pop up and then you can answer. Oh. Yeah, and Michelle, <laughs> Michelle will have great yeah. advice on how do you get interaction on this, Michelle? What should I have done if I wanted there to be people talking to us? Yeah, what you want, especially with Facebook, is let people know ahead of time that you're going to be going live um, a day or two ahead and then maybe five minutes ahead. And then have people on your team who will possibly share the live feed 
on your timeline. I don't know if any of you guys watched April the Giraffe, um, <laughs> have her have her baby, but every that went on live, and and then I could tell when I I shared it while I was watching it live, and so everybody, all my friends who were following, I went knew it was happening, mm -hmm. and you can watch it with or without comments. But with Facebook, especially with okay. with extension. And again, my whole purpose in doing this is so that we reach new people. We're supposed to use all reasonable efforts to reach new audiences. And so if you advertise and you get people say, hey, like I, I, would, I would ask Jill, hey, I'm going to be doing this really cool live stream. Would you mind um, when, you, when you see a pop-up, would you share it? And she'll say, sure. And, and I would do it for her. And it's that exponential um exposure that's really really important but with facebook you have you have to um advertise and let people know ahead of time that they're it's going to be happening with periscope or twitter you're using hashtags so people from all over the world will follow you but if you're not using the right hashtag they'll never know about it right okay. so i have the video here yep it, it is it is there it happened yep and then it'll keep the it'll the recording for you on Facebook. I don't know how long they keep it. Facebook, I think, keeps recordings forever, doesn't it? Yeah, and so will Periscope now. It used to be 24 hours and poof. Mm -hmm. Instagram and I think um, Snapchat are ephemeral. They just go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I opened Twitter and you can see when I, okay. But if there's so, if something like you really didn't want happen, you can delete it right away. Yeah, you can People delete. People who were live would have seen it, but it won't be like forever on your page. Oh, believe me, I've been no. I've been live, and had people say really vulgar things, and right. I've done live streaming of 4-H kids, kids and then there's weirdos that tune in I'll and they it. start saying Don't things worry. about the kids. And I, boom, I report them and all that, but, but I can't use, I don't want that staying out there live. I might keep it on my phone and edit it out, but it's, it basically ruins the, um, the live broadcast. Mm -hmm. There. I just it deleted happens. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's deleted. Yeah, it wasn't smooth because we weren't. The first. Yep, I should have had a waiver. So if I go to Twitter, the little tweet icon here in the corner, it gives me the option to go live right there. So here, waste to worth video. Up if I spell it right, demo. And so then I click the camera icon down there, and we're going to be live here in a little bit. It's initializing the stream. And you just did it naturally, but it is really way better to turn your camera side to side rather than up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like up and down. And it doesn't no, look like it's... If you want to use it later for something else in a, in a real video, you don't want the vertical. Yeah. And right now it's saying the internet connection is not going to allow me to, to connect because we've got too much going on. But um, basically we would do this similar thing here. And, and there it's about which hashtags you use. And it tells you, it gives you little prompts like we're building an audience for you. You know, we're telling your followers. And you'll be able to see when somebody joins the live stream. And so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But I think Twitter you're going to get a lot more of that inappropriateness than you would on like Facebook. Yeah, because everybody has a name attached to them. But mm -hmm. and and usually your fans and your friends will be will be told first that you're going live. With Twitter or Periscope, it's going to go out to everybody, and they also have a map. So I could go onto Periscope right now and say I want to see who's live streaming in Paris, and I would get everybody. So if anybody's curious about Nebraska or Delaware, they could see oh, there's four or five live streaming. They they see this map. And that's where you do get, you know, a stretch of weirdos will come in um, <laughs> and make comments, and you just block them. I, I have a, I was down in New Orleans, and I was <laughs> my first time there, and I was just doing it as a tourist. I wasn't doing it for extension, and somebody asked me to, you know, 
the traditional way to earn beads in, in <laughs> New Orleans. And yeah, I'm not going to say it, but I saw, and I just started laughing. I said, look, I'm 61 years old. You don't want to see that. And, and I just, I, I didn't, if you're going to do this, you can't be easily offended. You have to kind of say, look, hey, sorry, buddy, that's not appropriate. If you don't stop, I'm going to block you. Or, hey, that's not going to happen. I don't usually put my face on. I like to, you know, live stream other, other what's in front of me. And if you were actually live streaming, like for extension, do you do it by yourself or? Yeah, normally I do it by myself. And and the other thing I will do is, what Jill said about you can write a description down. That's very true. I write them ahead of time and put them in my note app. But I don't know what Android uses, but some kind of a writing app, because if you get disconnected, and you will, you want to go be able to go back. So I will say like join us at hashtag cooperative extension for a live calf cow you know calf being born so i might put calf and livestock hashtag i'll write that all ahead of time and if it goes out i don't have to and then you're out in the sun you can't see and you try so i just go to my app copy and paste plug that back in and then hit and i can so that's that that's been a really really helpful yeah, disconnections. That's just oh, a fact of life, it, isn't it? It's a fact of life, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's and so and the other thing too is, I do a lot of like man on the street walking and touring around kind of thing. So you get people who will come in five minutes into your live stream. So you have to repeat yourself too. You have to kind of every three or four minutes say who you are and why you're there, and what what you're doing, because they might not have caught it the first time they when you said it. You know, you have to kind of repeat that stuff. Mm -hmm. how so, much, how much data does it use if you're like on your, if you're not on Wi-Fi? How much data does that the live stream I, I don't know. I am blessed with a work phone and the data's. Um, I, data. I would imagine a lot, unless you can hop on somebody's Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, but little, if you're outside, you're not going to have Wi-Fi. You're going to use your whatever your plan is. Yeah, the two or three minute ones I've been doing here at Waste to Worth have hardly been a blip. I was surprised. I expected a little more data usage on mine because I was kind of specifically watching that, wondering how much it would use. And it was, yeah. um, I haven't probably even used more than a couple hundred meg. And most of the time that they are short, like once in a while we have live streamed like a 4-H award ceremony at the state fair and where parents couldn't be there. We've live streamed that. So it just sits up and on a tripod and just goes. So you're not going to get a big audience with that, but for those people who couldn't be there, they're really appreciative of it. Excellent. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for popping in, Michelle. She did this like four or five days ago. I was asking you if if I could use a, a video you had, and and in the end, it was like, well, why don't you just join us? And she was gracious enough to do that. So thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, hopefully you guys can, I think we have a break here. So you guys get to be the first ones to the goodies. And all this stuff I'll leave here for a few minutes. You're welcome to come up here and uh, have fun. Hopefully, like I said, next Waste to Worth, you guys are here. And I learned something cool that you're doing because, like I said, this is, just an area I've, I'm, I've done, dabbled in a little bit, but it's uh, something I'd like to do more, and I'd love to see Extension using these tools more. So here, here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got to try it. it. It's and you, you can't expect perfection. It's it's fun. It's something different. Mm -hmm. And if you don't try it, you don't. Yeah, you know, it won't be perfect. Don't expect it to be. It'll be all right. I'll actually set the phone and tripod and mount and everything up so you can see what it looks like all together here if you want to do that. So, Well, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate hey, it. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.